It's a secret. Does the on-air sign need to be on? No, that's for sure. Very good. There it is. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It is 6.30 p.m., and this is the regular city council meeting of the City of Rockport City Council for May 23rd, 2023, and I'll ask you to stand with us for the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag. First item on the agenda is presentation of certificate of election to the newly elected official for Ward 1, Stephanie Rangel. Stephanie, if you'll come up, I'll give this to you, and then we'll have a swearing in for you. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. I, Stephanie Ringo, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will faithfully execute the duties of the office of City Council Member Ward 1 of the City of Rockport of the State of Texas and will, to the best of my ability, Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws. The Constitution and laws of the United States. Of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. All right. Congratulations. Certificate to Councilman Ward 3, Brad Brundrett. There is that. Thank you, sir. And now he will be duly sworn in or sworn at. <laughs> sworn at, probably. City Council member of the, of the Office of City Council member Ward 3 of the Ward, City of Rockport. Ward 3 of the City of Rockport. Excuse me. Of the State of Texas and will to the best of my ability. Of the State of Texas and will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution and the laws of the United States. The laws and Constitution of the United States. And of this state. And of this state. So help me God. So help me God. Congratulations. Thank you. we're going to do is deliberate and act on the election of a council member as mayor pro tem. Uh, Mr. Mayor, uh, yes. if I may, I would like to nominate uh, 
our mayor pro tem, Andrea Hatman, again, to be our uh, mayor pro tem for the next at least a year. All right. Are there other nominations? If not, I'll call for a vote. Ward one. Second. I'll, I'll second the motion. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. Congratulations. Thank you. Next item on the agenda is citizens to be heard. At this time, comments limited to three minutes will be taken from the audience from persons who have signed the speaker's card located at the table at the back of the training room of the service center and delivered to the city secretary before the meeting begins or written comments received by 4 p.m. on the day of the meeting on any agenda item or subject matter that will be read into the meeting Persons wishing to address the council and who have registered using the citizen participation form will have up to three minutes to speak. In accordance with Open Meetings Act, council may not discuss or take any action on any item that has not been posted on the agenda. While civil public criticism is not prohibited, disorderly conduct or disturbance of the peace, as prohibited by law, shall cause the chair to terminate the offender's time to speak. I have two cards. First of all, this is citizens to be heard. First, uh, Adelaide Marlott. Good evening. I'm Adelaide Marlette, and I live at 456 Augusta. That is located in the Rockport Country Club of and this is the subdivision that I advocate for, usually for drainage. I'm here tonight just to do something briefly, and that is to <clears throat> get an update on the drainage plans and how we move forward with the drainage. If, if all of you have not had uh, a look at the project that is completed, it was a beautiful job. The hole that we created there, that area is just gorgeous and it worked pretty well this last real heavy rain that we had. There were some glitches, and Ken is going to tell you about them, but I just brought some pictures for hole number 17, I mean hole number, uh, pond number 20 at hole 17, and pond 10 located at the tee box, because I had been told about midway through the project that we would be, the next thing we'd do would be to clean out the ponds. And one of the things I brought along was um, the names of some people who do spraying. The county has used one, and one is just another group that is in the Ropstown area. They're called Herman Fish, Fish Farms. But if you aren't ready to do the actual digging out like we had with uh, 11 and 12, you can do some spraying, and we brought, I brought that along. And I also brought a calendar. Sissy Beasley, who used to live in the uh, subdivision, did this for us. And if you notice, when you look at it, she did not include any holes with weeds in them. That tells you something. But that's not what the problem is. The problem is, is that when you put reeds in those ponds, they don't hold the water they're supposed to, and they accumulate dirt. So please, what I would like to do is get the players again together, like we did before, Mayor, uh, Manager Sharana and see if we can move forward. Uh, we had some really excellent meetings before, and it, I would really appreciate if we could call one of those meetings now and see if we can move forward. I'll give you this in a few minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Marlott. Ken Barron. <clears throat>
and uh, using a lot of the existing vacant lots to build the homes. And a lot of those lots were drainage paths for floodwaters, and now they're getting plugged up by new houses being built there. And we're developing some new areas of flooding because those drainage paths are being blocked. <coughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Appreciate it. Next item on the agenda is consent agenda. All consent agenda items listed are considered to be routine by the city council and will be enacted by one motion. There will be no separate discussion on these items unless a council member requests so in which event the item will be removed from the consent agenda and considered in its normal sequence on the agenda. Do we have a request for removal of one item? Item nine, please. Item nine. Okay, we'll consider item nine after the rest of the consent agenda. Do I have a motion on the consent agenda items 10 through 15? Is there any reason to have you have a motion? I will. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented. Okay, I have a motion. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Minus one, number nine. I will read it. Minus nine, sorry. That was second. Yeah. I have a motion and second. Any further question or consent? If not, I'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. I need to read into the record item number 15, deliberate and act on second final reading of an ordinance of the City of Council of the City of Rockport, Texas, authorizing the acceptance of credit cards for payment of fees, fines, court costs, and other charges, providing for processing fee for payment of fees, fines, court costs, and other charges by credit card, providing for a service charge if a payment is not honored, providing for severability, providing a repealer clause, finding and determining that the meeting at which the ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law and establishing an effective date. Regular agenda item number 16. This is a postponed item from the May 9th meeting. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're right. The one we took out. Uh, item number nine, deliberate and act on approval of the City Council regular meeting minutes of May 9th, 2023, and special meeting minutes of May 17th, 2023. Uh, there was a correction to the minutes from the special meeting on May 17th. Um, Therese has made the correction already. Um, uh, Brad Rundrett and uh, Stephanie Rangel were noted on the minutes as in attendance, um, which they were not. She, she accepted that that change and it's been made. Um, just wanted to make sure that that was noted since it was incorrect in the packet. Okay. So I'll make a motion to accept item number nine with the amendment on attendance. I have a motion. I have a second. Second. I have a motion. Second. Any further question or debate? If not, board one. Aye. Board two. Aye. Board three. Aye. Board four. Aye. Mayor, aye. Item number 16, postponed as of May the 9th, 2023. Deliberate and act on first reading of an ordinance authorizing the closing, vacating, and abandonment of a portion of Sweet Bay Avenue lying between lot number 32, block number 4, Denver Heights subdivision, and lot number 17, block 7, Denver Heights subdivision, City of Rockport, Oranges County, Texas, according to the plat recorded in volume 1, page 9, Real Public Records of Oranges County, Texas, providing for the terms and conditions of such vacation and abandonment, authorizing the mayor to execute a quit claim deeds for the 0 0.193 acres or 8,419 square feet to be closed, vacated, and abandoned, and providing for an effective date. We did recently get the appraisal back on this. It was $25,000. And um, if Mrs. Pham and Mr. Elkins agree to that price, then um, we're asking for your approval to sell it. Are the two people in question, uh, Jessica Pham and Mr. Elkins, are you present? Can you come to the podium, please? Oh, Is Mrs. Pham here? Yes, sir. Uh, you have heard that the appraisal was $25,000. Is that 
suitable with you. That is suitable, and I have talked to Mr. Pham. We, ha we have agreed to, to split that cost okay. and responded. All right. Yeah. So if you guys approve, then can I get a check? Quick claim deed. Okay. Any further questions from council? I move to approve item 16 as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? A motion and second. Any further question or debate? Call for a vote, Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2? Aye. Ward 3? Aye. Ward 4? Aye. Mayor? Aye. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Item number 17, deliberate and act on first reading of an ordinance amending Chapter 22, Buildings and Building Regulations, Article 9, Permit and License Fees of the Code of Ordinances, City of Rockport, Texas, repealing all ordinances to the extent they are in conflict, providing for severability and providing an effective date. Yes, ma'am. Ms. Dietrich. Carrie Dietrich, community planner for the city of Rockport. And this came to light because we realized that we were doing engineered reviews for plats and plans and that sort of thing, but not being reimbursed by the developers. So that was how we originally started this, this amendment. But as we started looking, we realized there were things in there that that are no longer, they're obsolete, like licensing for electricians. We don't do that anymore. The state does all of that. So we took that out. Um, we didn't change any of the fees currently. We just, we, we rewrote it so it was compliant with what we're doing. Um, homestead, I know there was a question about should we um, define homestead? And that's entirely up to you. Um, the way it's worded in the code is that property owners can do repairs to their their primary residence as evidence to buy a homestead exemption. So if they have filed for homestead as primary residence, they can do plumbing, they can do electrical, and they don't have to be licensed contractors. But our ordinance said just to their home, which it's not the case. So we added the word homesteaded. Do you anybody feel like you need to define it? It's sufficient in my mind, but when I just brought it up, I mean, I I understand what a homestead is, but I didn't Some know there were different though. ways to interpret it, and that mm -hmm. was the, the the purpose of the question. If it's clear in your mind and you can defend that, I, I'm good with it, but it just may be a minor opportunity to enhance that sentence to include, as, as Ms. Schroner suggested, a homestead exemption on, of, on record, if that's the right language. I think that makes it very clear, even for someone that doesn't know like me, if I ask. Uh, we took out some of the things that were um, done during Harvey because they're no longer relevant. That's the, the registrant possessing their stuff and and um, let's see, rolling 12 month, we took that out. We, um, there was a question about waiving the, where is it? Waiving the um, registration fee during, <coughs> excuse me, during um, hazard, during uh, emergencies. And I think that was done. I mean, I can't speak because I wasn't here then, but because we, we did it in the city I was with because of the, um, the hecticness and the chaos going on, and they had to have their badge with them, even though they didn't pay the registration fee, and as soon as the um, disaster was, the declaration expired, then they had to start paying again. But I, it's up to you, I don't know if you want to keep that in there. So I think the question, and, and, and maybe Mike, you can We're help answer it, is, it, it, it calls for, for waiving of the $100 registration fee during disaster. I understand that doesn't mean that they don't have to register, but I'm, I'm curious why would we not accept that fee or require that fee when we're still doing that level of work? Now, if it's for a nonprofit or maybe some of these other um, Hands entities of hope who are trying things, to do good work, right. I get that, mm -hmm. but these are incoming contractors who are making money in our community why would they not pay the same registration fee that all of our other contractors had to pay to do work in our city? 
I, I understand expediting. I'm not, mm -hmm. I'm not asking to hold that up, but you are asking them to register during a disaster. Why do they not have to pay the fee like everybody else? But, you know, we, we scrambled to develop a policy where the contractors coming into town had to come in and register with us, get identification. We gave them a window sticker and a badge. We tried to get the message out to all of our citizens to check for that ID to ensure that they have registered. I, I, I agree with you. I, I think we should capture that $100 as they come in and register. They're already coming in. They're here. It's a standing fee that we have. All of our local contractors, they come in every year and register and re-register. I don't see any reason <coughs> to capture that $100. So, so when you look at Exhibit A on 196 of the agenda packet, uh, this is under the section 22311 building, uh, subsection A2. It doesn't indicate whether this was an, a, a change because of Harvey. It depends on when you guys re re revised this building code previously. So this may have been legacy before Harvey. It, it was revised, I believe, shortly after Harvey, and I don't know why it was revised and that was taken out, but I, I'm, I'm in full agreement that we should capture that $100 annually for any contractor that comes into the city of Rockport to do work, yeah. no matter what time it is. Time of, you know, just time to do regular work or time of need because of an extended emergency or something like that. They're here to make money. So. Right. Yeah. So I, I think, you know, I think removing it keeps it um, uh, fair for our existing contractors. Um, clearly, if there's a an issue that comes forward during the disaster that requires mm -hmm. us to make a modification, there's a mechanism in place for us to do that. But I, I don't if we're going to make changes to this ordinance, I think that's something that should be struck out at this point. OK, how about we change that to there shall be no fee assessed for reg for reg for registrations for nonprofit organizations only. I don't think they want to get into that. No. I think we just leave it. Then they have to prove yeah. If they're registering as a contractor, they should just you're a okay. contractor, you need to pay the fee. Yeah. Okay. And mo most of the nonprofits they're not coming in and registering as contractors. Right. They're just in the community. They're assistant. hiring someone to yeah. do it. Who's gonna make money off of the nonprofit? Yeah. So when 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 Hands of Hope, Hands of Hope, or uh, any of the other organizations came in, did did they register as contractors? They uh, did not register as contractors. They weren't. They were they were coming in and they they registered to be in our community as helpers, and they had a base of operations set up through uh, the nonprofit coordinator during Harvey, and so if people qualified for that type of assistance. We moved them over to that group, and then they were either hooked up with Hands of Hope, uh, the Baptist Men, Good Samaritans, the Cajun Army, and no, just any of the groups. Yeah, yeah. And, but, but they also came in when they came in to do their permits and everything else. They paid their fees also. Okay. Yeah, okay. and I, and I can't speak to to all of those organizations, but in in my role with Post Event Disaster Recovery Group. To my knowledge, we paid for all permitting, for all projects, yes. and all communities, yes. um, and and that was okay. It wasn't it wasn't always easy, and it did increase the cost of those projects. But we felt that it continued to help support the community recovery, and and was worth the funding because we we were able to get the funding. You Absolutely. know, a different disaster may be different. So, um, again, you know, my experience, I think they should should pay and then if because of the disaster there's a special one-off it can be discussed and considered at that time and, and a modification made so and, I, I agree that we will strike it a okay. declared disaster will give us certain privileges once the disaster is declared we can look at those things but it's only at the time of the declared disaster but we're setting ourselves up to ensure that number one we are getting everyone registered, getting them captured, if you will, and getting them into our system. That way, if there is an issue, and we had this during Harvey, where we had an issue with contractors that weren't as honest as they, you know, as, as they presented themselves, but the recourse that we had is we had their registration, we had their driver's license. So if homeowner came in and said, XYZ Roofing Company came in 
and I'm, you know, I'm looking to find them because they left town with my money or whatever, we have their contact information we can share with the citizens right. and such. That's and right. the other thing is, is they're paying the fees, they're paying the permits, and that helps us recover. Okay, well, I'll take it out. Um, we need a motion. Do we need a motion? Wait, are you are you a motion? Well, no, this is the first reading. Okay. No, you can make a motion with the vision. Are, are you finished? Uh, I was going you to have anything else you me. wanted to say? <laughs> okay, we can pass on first reading with the that we are going to amend as directed in this reading, and by second reading that will be amended. Yes, sir. So I make the motion for um, this item with the amendment to section twenty-two dash three one one building subsection A that Homestead be defined as we stated earlier homestead the exemption. Yeah. with the homestead exemption and then a2 be struck out in its entirety second i have a motion and a second any further question or debate if not we'll call for a vote ward one aye ward two aye ward three aye ward four aye mayor aye i'm number 18 Deliberate and act on first reading of an ordinance of the City Council of the City of Rockport, Texas, adopting an order declaring certain charter amendments and adopted pursuant to a special election held on Saturday, May 6, 2023, adopting an authenticated copy of the Home Rule Charter for certification by the mayor, ordering the mailing of such authenticated copy of the amended City of Rockport Home Rule Charter showing the approval by the voters to the Secretary of State for file and recording said certification, providing for severability, finding and determining that the meeting at which this ordinance is passed is open to the public as required by law and establishing an effective date. Any other nope. comment? If not, we canvassed the vote and that was approved. Do I have a motion? I make a motion to approve agenda item number 18 as read. I have a motion to second. Have a second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any further question or debate? If not, we'll call for a vote. Ward one. Aye. Ward two. Aye. Ward three. Aye. Ward four. Aye. Mayor, aye. Number 19. <coughs> Deliberate and act on acceptance of Rockport Harvey Housing LLC Pearl Point annual report and approval of re rebate of property taxes paid in 2022 per the 2018 Chapter 380 Economic Development Agreement with Rockport Harvey Housing, LLC. Mayor and Council, this is a 380 agreement that was done uh, several years back, uh, and they have submitted, first of all, let me say this, Pearl Point has been looking for two things to submit to me. <laughs> Phase two has met the conditions of the 380 agreement. So by the contract we have with them, they're due $33,926. All right. Any questions, Council? If not, do I have a motion? Move to approve item 19 as presented. Okay. Have a motion. Second. motion and a second. Any further questions or debate? Call for a vote, Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2. Aye. Ward 3. Aye. Ward 4. Aye. Mayor, aye, it's unanimous. Item number 20, deliberate, I'm sorry. What was <laughs> Deliberate and act on acceptance of Gulf Coast Hardware, LLC, Ace Hardware, annual report and approval of payment for increase in sales and use tax paid in 2022 per the 2016 Chapter 380 Economic Development Agreement with Gulf Coast Hardware, LLC. the conditions of the contract and are owed 40% of their sales tax due back, which is $23,323.82. All right. Any question, Council? Do I have a motion? Move to approve item 20 as presented. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further questions?
Call for vote, Ward 1. Aye. Ward 2. Aye. Ward 3. Aye. Ward 4. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Item number 21. Boy, this is getting easy. Deliberate and act on approval of an emergency purchase order for equipment to replace a failed rake system in the clarifier at the wastewater treatment plant. Mr. Donahoe. Mayor and Council, uh, this equipment that we're ordering and has been ordered will replace an existing rake system that had a cat catastrophic failure at the wastewater treatment plant. If you remember a few weeks ago, we came to you and we ordered some equipment to replace what we call the grit screw removal system. And there's four places or four places within the plant during the process that helps remove the solids. when. The waste gets to the wastewater treatment plant. It goes through what we call the headworks, and then we have a rota screen, which is the uh, it's the single treadmill that you see out at the wastewater treatment plant, where it begins to remove the solids. Then it goes through a grit screw system, and further solids are removed. Then it goes through two different processes, and then it goes into a clarifier, where further solids are removed. The grit screw system is 100% out of service. It went out completely and we ordered that equipment and it has a six to nine month lead time to get here. Okay, so we had another failure of the rake system within the clarifier and it, it was limping along and it finally stopped. And so now we only have two spots within the plant or the treatment process that are removing solids, which is leading to uh, an extended amount of suspended solids in our effluent discharge, which could uh, create a problem with exceeding our permit levels. So we had to order this equipment. We ordered it on May the 16th. It has about a six to nine week delivery time. We have a contractor in place that when the equipment gets here, they will install it in the existing clarifier. We have another project that is scheduled to come to you in the very near future for about $3.4 million for upgrades to the wastewater treatment plant, which will include the, the replacement of the grit screw system and adding an additional clarifier and repairing the rake system and fixing the tank on the, the existing clarifiers that are already there. This just gets us limping along as we go. Right now we're running what we call the belt press. We're running it about 16 to 18 hours a day and removing massive amounts of solids and then that solid is trucked off for agricultural use. But this has already been done. Uh, it, it, it's allowed by the uh, local government code procurement necessary to preserve and protect the public health and safety of the municipality or procurement necessary because of unforeseen damages to public machinery, equipment, or other property. So we went ahead, sent the purchase order in, the equipment is on order, we expect to get it in the next six to eight weeks, and we already have a contractor <coughs> standing by to put it in when it gets here. Any questions, Council? I have no problem with the, uh, the, the the PO going through. I mean, uh, obviously, it's a it's a need. And thanks for not totally delving into how the sausage is made. Uh, you know, <laughs> in public record, uh, is there anything? Are there any other stopgap measures uh, between now and nine months from yeah, when? Got a previous prayer, and I will say that we've been, you know, living a lot for multiple years out there. I feel like we have put the, the wastewater treatment back together with bale wire, chewing gum. Yes, sir. Worst case scenario, we can enter into a pump and dump contract. Pump, uh, a pump and dump. Yeah. So uh, just trying to, trying to yeah, keep me getting there. If, we, uh, if we have another failure, we would end up having a contractor come in with pump trucks and removing our sludge and taking it elsewhere. That's expensive, but it is backup. And you know, we, we, we have a plan in place. We have a contractor on standby, but we are limping along. We are still well within the permit levels from TCEQ on our suspended solid discharge. And there's no environmental issues with the discharge or anything else. It's still suitable for, for uh, irrigation, if you will. 
it's still safe for wildlife and fisheries. We're, we're not busting permit. We're not doing anything that's going to get the city in trouble with TCEQ. Okay. But we are, like I said, limping along. That new um, improvements will have a lifespan repair replacement plan. So there's no more bubble gum in Baylor. Baylor. Yeah. That uh, this the the one uh, that we have. Well, I guess the two that we've already purchased, uh, those will, uh, those will work with the expansion. Uh, yes. The bridge crew equipment will align with the the contract when that equipment gets here. That's a six to nine month lead time on getting that equipment here. So when that equipment gets here, that'll be part of the process for the three point four million dollars. Roger that. With the rake system that we've just ordered, when the uh, project takes takes place and we start moving forward, we've got two options. We can leave the, the, the newest existing rake in the clarifier, or as part of the project, we can replace the rake and take this rake out and put it in storage and have one in backup. And that's what we're, Never that's what we'd like to do. But we're gonna be monitoring the budget as we go and everything else to ensure that uh, we're spending our money wisely. But it's always good to have spare parts. Understand. Okay. No further questions. Any other questions? So, Vanessa, the 125, almost 126,000, we're absorbing that into the existing budget. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Any other questions? Do I have a motion to approve emergency purchase order? I make the motion for item 21 as presented. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. I have a motion and a second. Any further question? Not, we'll call for a vote. Board one. Aye. Board two. Aye. Board three. Aye. Board four. Aye. Mayor, aye. It's unanimous. Item number 22, city manager report. Very good. Reports from council. Have anything new already that you would like to talk about? <laughs> always have something, but I really don't. In the last two weeks, we've not had any new activity in War II, um, with the exception of uh, had a couple constituents that have reached out, um, updates on, on flooding or, or water behavior in their community as uh, construction um, has commenced and just kind of following the water and making sure that it behaves the way it is. So I appreciate those that reached out. Um, we've also had, um, had some calls on some code enforcement concerns, and um, those have been turned over to Vanessa for, for follow-up, and I appreciate that. Other than that, welcome to the team here. Thank you. And I look forward to working with you. Yeah. All right. Great. Uh, I returned from the TML Leadership Academy uh, this week, and I would say that was a, uh, a very fun and worthwhile academy to attend. Uh, got to make a lot of contacts from from the Panhandle to West Texas to East Texas down to South Texas. It was, uh, no matter what part of the state you're in, everybody's got the same problems. Maybe the, maybe West Texas doesn't have drainage problems, but because it, it doesn't rain, but, but Stuff anyway. Blows away, it, yeah, just the, the wind moves it. Uh, but anyway, it was, a, it was a really good academy uh, uh, training session to attend, and uh, I want to thank the city for allowing me to attend. Uh, we have, um, I think, some good news on uh, the GLO drainage projects. Uh, I hope to start seeing some equipment uh, coming very soon. Uh, I know uh, a lot of people in Ward 3 are very anxious and excited to see that happen. Um, and so we look forward to that. Uh, hopefully it's uh, a worthwhile project and fingers crossed, knock on wood and everything, that it, it goes smoothly, smoother this time. Cool. Has to. <laughs> uh, that's all I have, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll just, we'll start off in saying thank you to uh, Ken Barron and Natalie for coming out today. You're in my ward, so I appreciate your comments and um, we will continue working on what we can do to better the drainage in our area. Um, one project is done, so now we can start looking forward to the new ones. Um, on top of that, I did attend the uh, TML small conference uh, a couple weeks back, I believe, and that was good information and that's just for towns that are growing and all small towns in Texas are growing right now. 
So just giving you a little bit a better outlook and how to navigate it and the way you want to navigate it and the location that you're in, and that was a lot of good information. Um, I guess the only other thing is uh, kids are going to be out of school this week. We have seniors graduating. I have to put a plug into my daughter. She's graduating, class of 2023, so very proud of her. And we just have to uh, congratulate all the other seniors out here that are going to go out into the world and better it for us. So let's give them all a lot of kudos. I think has a summer yes, yeah. Well, congratulations to yourself. <laughs> and I think that's it. The only thing I've got, the regular council meeting scheduled for June the 13th has been rescheduled for Wednesday, June the 14th. So the council meeting in two weeks will be on the 14th of June. Anything else for? Next, city council will hold an executive session pursuant to provisions of Chapter 551 of the Texas Government Code in accordance with the authority contained in Section 551.071, consultations with attorneys seeking the advice of attorney about pending or contemplated litigation or a settlement offer and on a matter in which the duty of the attorney to the governmental body under the Texas disciplinary rules of professional conduct of the State Bar of Texas clearly conflicts with its chapter Concho Street General Land Office GLO drainage projects. It is 7:13, and we are in executive session. Just said all that doesn't matter anymore. I, do I have a motion to adjourn? So motion to adjourn. I have a motion to adjourn. We are adjourned. It is 714.